having toured the globe and exhibited her work on an international landscape, Nelly explains what has been her biggest business highlight. I worked really hard on a few international exhibitions this year, so I've had the privilege of going overseas. I've exhibited in London, I've exhibited in New York, I've done two exhibits in New York this year. Gray, a South African artist, and I'm all the way in the Big Apple um, to show my work. I'm really drawn to human stories, and I believe we all communicate with our eyes, uh, especially. Um, and the stories behind every single face is important to me. Um, I love creating portraits, and I'm kind of well known for creating portraits back home. For me, when I paint somebody that's blue or purple, it transcends race. It transcends gender and it just becomes a human to just appreciate that person and that story in that moment. In my work there is multiple meanings and lots of layers uh, and lots of themes going on. So I think one of my most important themes is empowerment and hope. Um, a lot of these faces you can see there's a story, there's been a turmoil or something, but these characters have transcended that and they're looking towards the future with hope. Even though those were supposed to be highlights, they weren't really, which is funny because I think we seek these things and once we're there we realise, ah, oh, it's not actually all that. I think for me my biggest joy is interacting on social media with some of the fans. Um, the other day I just noticed that a lot of people had some of my paintings as their profile pictures on Facebook because they love it so much. Uh, people asking me questions online, responding to the real people on a grassroots level is what I really enjoy. Um, I definitely wasn't always successful. I started as an illustrator at a quite a well-known illustration company in Cape Town. I could do it for two weeks and I really struggled with my boss. So I resigned and that same night I started building a website using my student work. That Monday we launched our first big client and I started building apps. And I think as a young entrepreneur I made too much money too fast and I never had respect for it. And unfortunately, I married quite young, and by the age of 27, I was divorced and completely broke. <laughs> and that was really a humbling experience for me. And I needed to scrape my life together, and everything I worked with, this A student that just had it all going for her all the time, I needed to pick myself up and decide where I was going and what I was gonna do. Having left the commercial space and a woman to pursue her passion in fine art, she explains that behind the success of the business is a great support structure that has guided her during her transition from an artist and an entrepreneur. It's a difficult one to answer. Um, I think the person that had the most impact on me is by far my father um, and how to build a legacy and a dream that actually lasts. He always used to teach us that a business and money is life. It is a tree and everybody eats from this tree. So it's very important to never prune the branches or cut off the entire feed, but actually to bear fruit. And I think that's really what our business is. Our business gives life to so many people, changing so many lives, changing our teammates, changing the people that step in here and interact with us. But I definitely think I couldn't have done any of this without my husband. Um, the day I said to him, I'm closing my design agency, he challenged me maybe for one minute and then he realised this is what I need to do. And he's never counted my dreams, always let Lillian be Lillian. I truly believe um, that as South African artists we have a lot to offer the international stage. My art is really well received overseas. Um, and I think the whole vibe of Africanacity and us being from Africa and being authentic Africans is really, really important. Our message that we bring from Africa is so important and so authentic. And I think with all the terrible politically things going around, South Africans are quite drained, been through a lot of changes. But I think that art is that creative outlet. That moment that you can come, you can come to a studio, a safe space, soft music, platters, wine, and just have a fun creative night out. I find a lot of people really need that at the moment in our environment. Even though the company has shown exponential growth and international exposure within the last three years, the business has not been without its own set of challenges. I think my personal challenges for me is it's so easy to look at yourself and to look at your character and your personality and say, okay, I'm not good at this, I really suck at that. 
But I think the trick to being a successful entrepreneur is then to really get good at that, or really understand it, or find the right person to outsource that to. So I think for me it's admin, and uh, admin really drains me, so I'm really happy with my teammate that's really strong in that, um, so that I can do the stuff that I'm really good at. I must say, when when you are taught marketing strategy and you know you start with a SWOT analysis, they always tell you to look at what the competition does. I really don't do that. I am just being Lillian and doing what Lillian does. And I know there's a lot of competition out there for paint nights and for art schooling and being an artist, but I am just following my passion. And I think people respect that authenticity and that's why they fall in love with the Lillian Gray brand. Lillian explains the brand is expanding beyond the canvas and into the interior design space. She hopes to grow her business into various markets and industries with beautiful aesthetics associated with Lillian Gray, the brand. I am extremely excited because we are launching a Lillian Gray interior range. I love interior design and I love creating spaces and I believe our environment impacts our minds and our space in our minds so much. So I'm launching Lillian Gray interior products and hopefully that will be out soon by the end of August. And we've got stunning photo shoots planned with the products in a beautiful interior. So I'm really excited about that. The business belief that I live by, um, I think it's quite sad that a lot of people has this idea that an artist is starving and doesn't have any money and people kind of fell in love with the story of the struggling genius that Van Gogh was. But I think there's so many other superstars out there like Andy Warhol died a millionaire and he had seven Rolls Royces. So I think for me it's about changing the mindset of what an artist is and giving the youth hope that you can actually be a full-time artist and make it big and make the money. Um, you don't have to settle for that office job if this is your passion. And I really believe that creativity is our future. I really believe that when we are going to be colleagues to artificial intelligence, we need to shine and the thing that makes our human brain unique is our creativity. Next week on Upstarts, we're profiling the co-founder of Digs Connect, Alexandria Pupta. She runs a student accommodation business on digital platforms.